So welcome to this final, and I am sad to say, this final episode of The Virtual Delegate. And I think it's been clear over the course of the last six weeks, we have realized that hybrid events truly are here to stay. And the opportunity is upon us right now to embrace them, to use this opportunity to build our business and our events in brand new ways. By developing your strategy in new shapes, new spaces, with a brand new design, you can propel yourself forward as an individual, as an industry leader who others will truly look up to. And in this final episode of The Virtual Delegate, we are dedicating it to giving you the key insights that you need to prepare, not just a foundation, but also an action plan full of readiness and practical tools and techniques that you'll be able to apply and employ straight away. And when I said this is a great episode, I meant it. We have lined up a frankly rock star panel of experts to help us out. So let's take a moment to meet this week's guests. On the virtual delegate this week, we welcome Ari Lahav, president of IAPCO and VP of clients and operations at the Keynes Group. Sal Edmonds and Stuart Gracie from the hardworking team at UK based agency Production Bureau. Neil Thompson from the Delegate Wranglers, the world's fastest growing community for event professionals. And Una O'Reilly, Director of Sales and Marketing at the home of the virtual delegate, ICC Belfast. I told you we had got the big hitters for episode six, and I genuinely meant it. And first up, we have got Ari Lahav. Ari heads up IAPCO, a central association for PCOs the world over. Now, he has been recognized in the Eventex top 100 most influential people in the industry for two consecutive years. So who better to kick off this final episode of The Virtual Delegate? Ari, we are so delighted to have you join us here. Where are you coming from today? Hi, David, and thank you for having me. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm here from the lovely sunny Tel Aviv. And thank you for hosting me in the last episode of the show. We saved all of the good stuff to episode six, Ari, I can assure you. And if anyone hasn't visited Tel Aviv before, I can assure you it's almost identical to Belfast. You'd almost not separate uh, the two cities. But look, Ari, for you and your members, there has been huge fundamental change in the way that we deliver, design, and curate our events. Do you think that this change is here forever, or will we just flip back to the old ways? Well, it's a great question. It's a million dollar question like everybody asking, but I, I'll tell you what I think. I mean, I this was a forced revolution, right? Our industry has changed and evolved year by year, but this was a forced revolution to all of us. And uh, we are in the people business and we are all eager and passionate about getting together again in person. So yes, virtual is here to stay. Hybrid in different shape or form is here to stay, but I think we will go a little bit backwards uh, more similarly to what we experienced in the past, plus, plus, what is what is this plus? What are we talking about? Um, I think it's it's very clear that association and organization have realized through this pandemic that education can be consumed online, right? We can all learn like we're doing here today. Um, and therefore, maybe the objective and the goals of the in-person meeting might shift, might change to better serve the needs. So maybe it will be fo more focused on uh, uh, creating communities, on uh, research collaboration, on networking, getting together alongside with the education. Uh, but the education can be done outside of the days of the live event. So I think that, that this is the main thing we'll see in the future of meetings. And obviously, this change has been accelerated. You described it as a force revolution. I think that that sounds like a great name for your autobiography if you haven't started working on it straight away. I'm curious, for you as an organization, what areas are you focusing on to support and engage your members, not just today, but over the course of the changes that will undoubtedly come over the next 12 months and beyond? Yeah, I mean, for us as IAPCO, of course, the International Association of Professional Congress Organizer, like any other association, when all this, this pandemic started, we, we went into a crisis management mode. We, we thought we we're going to fight for our survival because we didn't know what will happen with our members. All of them are PCOs. Everybody were at risk at that point. So the first thing, you know, it was in steps. And the first step we, we took is that we realized we need to create platform for knowledge exchange and sharing between our members. 
to hear what's happening in other countries, what they are facing, what they are experiencing, what they are doing, and brought them tools that will help them to deliver better, better virtual events or to actually know how to de deliver virtual events. And this became and evolved in the second stage uh, that we opened it to the entire uh, industry ecosystem because we really, everybody wanted to get involved. And, and, and it became what we call a, a NIAPCO impact dialogue that we're doing once a month and uh, sharing best practices and knowledge to our members. And some of them are uh, thought, you know, thought leadership discussion about future of traveling and future of, of events like we are doing today. Um, and I'm happy to say, I mean, you ask what do we do as a, an association, I think what we, we learn to assess every activity that we do uh, to ensure that it brings added value to our members. That was very important to us, not to do in order to do, but to do in order to bring value. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to share that the results at the end of the day, that, in, you know, at the end of 2020, we had 97 percent retention wow, of our members in IACO. That is phenomenal success. You must be so incredibly pleased. And you've mentioned how important people are. We know that this is a people industry, of course. How concerned are you about the talent that we might have lost through this period of challenge? Some have, for obvious reasons, disappeared to other industries to take care of themselves and their families. Is this something that we'll be able to recover? Is there a plan that we need to have in place? Or do you think is that talent gone? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, of course, our industry is one of the most deadly hit. We, we, we are the first to hit and might be the last to, to recover. And um, I, I think in the beginning, of course, we've lost talent. But I think the majority of the PCOs were able to retain in, in some sort of, of, of different formats of maybe governmental support to save many of their talents. Uh, on the other hand, the biggest challenge for now, for us uh, in our industry, is actually to recruit people. It's very difficult to find people right now that trust this industry, uh, but also people that come with different experiences, right? We, we, we all are learning new skills, uh, like we are having today from, from more, you know, the burden is more on our IT team today, more than in the past. So we're looking for more people with skills of studio production and data science and data mining and IT people. And we are actually fighting with the big companies uh, so it, it, it's, it's becoming more challenging to recruit good talents. Well, obviously, talent is is one of the secret sauces that we've had in the industry for years. But speaking of secrets, I, one last question, and, and I think this applies to a lot of our viewers as they plan ahead for the next one to three years, Ori, it might be really difficult for them to know what to invest in, what to focus on, what to spend their time doing. What's your advice to your members? What should they have as their priority one over the course of the next three to six months to make sure that three to five years from now we're all back stronger than ever i mean we need to take this time for upskilling our stuff i mean i i first of all it's always we're again people business i think we cannot cope with all this uh challenging time without a, having a, a good team in place and it is time to invest in our people i always say to my team that i uh my goal is that they come to the office with a smile and leave at the end of the day with a smile uh, even when it's a difficult time. So leadership skills that, that will enable us to ensure that our, we have happy employees and taking this time to upskill them uh, in order to be prepared for the future of the meeting. And that investment needs to continue for sure. Ori, stay where you are. We will be back with you in just a few moments. Thank you so much for your insights. And if you want to engage with the team at IAPCO, uh, IAPCO they're a phenomenal organization who constantly have PCOs at the center of everything that they do. They've got some amazing virtual learning and people and organizational development tools that you must check out if you haven't seen it before. So thank you, Ari. Thank you, IAPCO. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. Now, when we start started working on the virtual delegate. What was really important to us was to understand the pulse of the industry, what matters most, where are we focusing our energies and our time. So at that point, we knew we needed to have the team from the um, delegate wranglers on. Uh, with 22 years experience in the event industry, Neil Thompson has worked for large corporations, for public sector clients, for communication agencies, and of course, operated his own freelance event management business from 2000 and five 
until 2019, where he worked hard to organize, manage, design, and deliver a huge array of events, principally in the pharmaceutical sector. Now, Neil founded the Delegate Wranglers Facebook group about a million years ago in 2014. It seems truly like generations ago, which has since grown organically over the course of the last few years and is now widely considered as the most engaged, most active, most involved community inside our sector, with current membership numbers at an eye-watering 21,000, and it's growing by about 400 event professionals every single month. So when we wanted to find out what the industry was feeling, Neil, we needed to make sure that we had you on board. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on The Virtual Delegate. Oh, thank you, David, and thanks for that intro. Can you do that for me every time? That was amazing. <laughs> I've already booked in to speak at your, speak at your funeral, Neil. I'm very excited <laughs> about the gig. Uh, I wanted to ask, look, all that, all those years ago in 2014, when you started Delegate Wranglers, what was your primary motivation? Oh, you know what? I'd like to say it was a big master plan. I had this plan for a huge group, but... You know, as, as the way with a lot of the kind of best things that happened to you, it was just organic and I just set it up to help me do my job better, um, you know, so I could tap into a kind of mine of information from the 20 or so people that I invited to join this group with me. And believe it or not, it just grew from there. It was, you know, it just snowballed and grew and grew and grew. And suddenly you've got this, you know, 21,000 problem solvers, you know, in your back pocket waiting to help you with anything. It's a phenomenal network and they are so active. Put one single request on Delegate Wranglers and frankly, you're spammed with thousands of real actual <laughs> solutions. Uh, not just yeah. not just people guessing what could or might or should work, but real event professionals helping real event professionals. And I think yeah. it's important that we address the fact that over the course of the last 12 months, it hasn't just been about sharing suppliers, about networking. It's been about so much more. It's been a beating heart of the industry and a support network too. Yeah, you know, we, once it became apparent that, you know, what was happening to our industry, you know, we just went straight into kind of help mode and just set out to help all of our members and not even our members, you know, the wider industry. You know, we did everything on our group for free. We tried to help them with so much information. And then we started a, we started a show called the, the DW Live Show, which we've done something like 60 odd episodes now every week. What a week, David. That, that was a that was a killer. Um, you know, providing content and upskilling uh, people so that people could come away from this time, you know, a, you know, a bit more motivated with some skills in the back pocket. And maybe even, you know, going back to what Ari was saying, you know, maybe thinking about a change of direction slightly within the industry, you know, because they've heard about, you know, somebody who's how to do social media, for example. And then suddenly, you know, they might think, well, I could I could retrain to do that. So, it was really good. I mean, it was really good for us as well, personally, because it gave us like a really good purpose as well to get us through it. Because we were going through it just like everybody else. You know? Of course, it really has cut through the industry in so many different ways. Uh, have you noticed a change in the mood at the moment? I often think that, as we've talked about in previous episodes, tragedies or crises like this, we go through those predictable stages of shock, of denial, of acceptance, etc. Where would you say the industry is at the moment? And are you starting to see it move in a, in a more ambitious, in a more positive, in a more hopeful direction? Definitely. Um, you know, we've, we've been on a journey with, with the group, you know, and I think I mentioned to it like the seven stages of divorce, you know, denial, acceptance. And we've been through all that. And there was anger at the beginning, you know, as well, at what was going on to our industry. And all I would say is, you know, we've had a couple of false storms, but it finally feels like, and it's almost like there we say it, we're kind of see the, we can see the end in sight. Um, so I would say the temp, you know, the temperature of the industry at the moment is, bristling under everybody's a bit cautious because they don't want to see the rug pull from under them again um, but i think once we hit july 19 i think you will see you know a huge optimism i've been speaking to a few suppliers this morning and they've been telling me that their bookings have been going through the roof not only their inquiries but their actual bookings bookings at hotels people you know firming up bookings not just saying well maybe yeah, so, well, look, don't get time. me wrong. Few things excite me more than the three letters RFP, but a signature is pretty darn exciting as well. I suppose <laughs> one, one last question, Neil. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you, of course, the industry has changed. We've been agile. We've been flexible. I hate to use the word pivot. It makes me genuinely feel unwell. But Delegate Wranglers, I guess, your role will be shifting and changing. What are your priorities as you support the industry over the next 12 months? 
you know what we're constantly changing we're constantly adapting to what the industry needs you know we kind of pride ourselves on that we will try things if it doesn't work we'll adjust it we'll try again we'll think of new things and new directions just like we have with this you know we moved to doing we did social events in person and suddenly we had to move to social social events online you know doing these dw live shows suddenly we're thinking about taking this out on the road and doing all kinds of things so yeah, we, we just constantly change. You know, this is a never changing industry, isn't it, David? To be honest, it's it never stops moving, and that's why that's why we love it so much. To be honest, well, I for one, I'm excited to get along to one of the in person delegate wranglers events and see you in 3D. I have no idea if you actually have any texture. No, I think no. you might just be a gloss laminated image. You'll be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil, stay where you are. We will be back with you in just a few moments. And if you haven't, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't engaged with the Delegate Wranglers yet, then drop everything. Stop watching this episode. Search for them on every conceivable social media channel because they are on them all. And it's amazing, an amazing way to connect with the industry, to stay excited and engaged about not only the challenges, but about the opportunities that are coming for all of us. So make sure that you look the team up. Now, next up, over the course of the last uh, several years, I've worked with so many amazing agencies across the UK. But for three decades, the team at Production Bureau have been blazing a trail in the fast moving world of creative communications. They've got hubs all across the UK delivering truly spectacular live, but also virtual events. And they have built a world class reputation for breaking the mold for a client list that truly looks like a who's who of the corporate world. A little bit earlier this week, we caught up with Sal and Stuart, and I began by asking them if they really believed that the virtual event experience can ever match up to that of a live delegate. I think it can. I think you can create the same amount of engagement and interaction that you can do in, in the room. And I think what's interesting is we've found that some people prefer the virtual. So I think we need to think about what does the delegate need? We need to approach it differently. I think it still remains really important to get under the skin of what is it that the client wants to get across? What's the messaging? How does that work? So I think it, it can be, it can match face to face. For some people it's better, but definitely you need to approach it differently. It's a completely different medium. We used to believe pre-pandemic, if it wasn't in the room, that was the holy grail, then it wasn't worth talking about. But actually now we've learned you can do it differently in virtual and make it as engaging. Stuart, can it get that same engagement and that same excitement? I think it can do. As long as you, before you're planning the event, you're working out what you need to get from it, making sure that, you know, you've got breakout rooms if you want that face-to-face -face element, you've, your content's correct. Yeah, definitely. What we have seen, which is really nice, is family interaction more. Quite a lot of our clients have done um, evening activities, early evening, children have got involved, they've got involved in awards, they've got husbands involved, wives involved, and actually that has added for a lot of people having their family involved in, uh, in some of the activities they've done at work. As we look ahead to the next 24 months, what do you think the future of virtual events will be like? It's certainly not going to go back to how it was. It's going to go forward, but different, you know. I think we are going to hopefully be in the world of these hybrid events where we've got um, people on site. However, there'll be that element of recording it or streaming it out so delegates don't need to know travel. Because I think what we've all realised, and especially in the world of sustainability, is that in the past where you had people travelling all over the country to go to one event, you don't need to do that anymore. I think the technology is kind of catching up with where we were to begin with. It was a struggle when we were like, oh, how does Teams work? How does Zoom work? The technology is there now that we can do these high production events, stream it out, make it look almost as nice as this, David. I think what will be interesting is expectations of virtual delegates. The fact that um, you can be there live or virtual. Previously, my expectations might have been lower, but now I want the same experience. So Stuart, what investments do you think event professionals should be making today to make sure they're ready for the future of virtual and hybrid events? I think there's quite a few uh, investments need to make, but specifically in people and having the right people the industry has completely changed sadly there are jobs that are no longer needed we need to make sure that we're bringing in the right people for like the newer parts the digital parts i think what we need to keep an eye on is the hotels and venues to make sure they've got the adequate internet we've all been in conferences in the past where 
there wasn't even enough internet to watch a video. I think really is talking with the hotels, making sure that infrastructure is in place. They expect that if there's a conference there, there is going to be an element of streaming. I think ultimately event professionals, we're all about the people, aren't we? We're all about building those relationships. I think it's how we invest in people. I think I didn't, from, from what Stuart said, it's keeping ahead of that curve as much as we can, what that technology is. I think some of the struggle I we experience as an agency is clients see a new bit of tech and they want to use it because it's new, but just bringing it back, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. How do we make it right? So keeping our people engaged, keeping, keeping our people upskilled, it's all about, for me, the people, how you invest in them, make us as fit for the future as we can be. Stuart, how do you feel about the future of events? Excited. Beautifully done, Stuart. Wow. One one word. <laughs> Sal, as you look ahead, how are you feeling about the next few months and years for us as event professionals? I think it's going to be interesting. And I think what's interesting is we've, we've been hit very hard as, as an industry by the pandemic, but we've hung on in there. We've pivoted. We've turned it around, I think. I feel really hopeful for us, you know. I think we we add a great deal to the economy. We add a great deal to helping businesses grow and develop. So I feel confident. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to continue to be challenging. But we're not in events because we like to have an easy life. We don't mind a challenge. I think it's going to keep on coming. And I wouldn't want to be in any other industry than the events. Tell me what's going on at Production Bureau at the minute. How have the last 12 months been and how's the pipeline looking as you move ahead? It's been um, an interesting time at PB. We have um, pivoted, like most agencies out there, to delivering virtual. We've seen clients continue to stick with us, which has been brilliant because it's a testament, I think, to our relationships. I think what's also great is we're seeing a lot more installations. So we are currently at the moment at the r &A helping them um, work in the hospitality suites. So it's been it's been tough, but it's been it's been really good. The team has stuck together and um, you know we're looking forward to the future. A big thanks to all of the team there at Production Bureau. They could have been with us live if they didn't have two actual virtual events happening today. So I really appreciate uh, Sal and Stuart taking the time to catch up and tell us about your experience. Feel free to check out their amazing case studies on productionbureau.com. Thanks to every single one of you who have come with us on this virtual delegate journey. It has been an amazing opportunity to come together as an industry to think big about where we're heading. And I cannot see... Well, uh, we cannot wait to see what we all do together. My name has been David Mead. I hope I'll get to see you all soon. For the time being, take care and stay safe, everyone.